So this patient's coming in for an evaluation of a lesion that she had removed about, I guess, about 10 days ago. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, 10 days ago. And clearly what's happened is this is dehist. Um, so that means it's just opened up. There's a bunch of reasons why this can happen. And, and while this isn't my procedure, I wouldn't cast shade on the physician who did it because sometimes there's things that are against your control and I wouldn't blame the patient either. You can sometimes shift the wrong way and it opens back up. You know, there's a bunch of things that go into why these things happen. You could argue, could we've had internal stitches here? You know, it's hard to say based on what the clinician was thinking might have been an issue with that or could we have actually left the stitches in longer? At what day were they taken out? Like day seven, day 10? Uh, day eight. Yeah, day eight. So for an area like this, I probably would have left mine in for 10 to 14 days, but even still it could potentially happen. So the key with these in terms of doing repair is we're gonna have to re-expose the basement membrane. So we have to freeze this up and then scrape this out a little bit. So you're gonna feel a poke here. You're gonna feel a burning. You okay? Yes. So if you've never had anesthetic before, this stings. This stuff isn't innocuous. Some tolerate it better than others. Do the same thing from this side. You okay there? Yep. So how does that feel when I do that? Does that hurt? No, it's fine. How about this side? Not too bad. No. So this is the part that's critical. So the reason why we have to re-expose it, because if I took her skin down here and I just tried to tie these two areas together, as soon as I let the stitch go, it's gonna fall apart because skin doesn't stick to skin. So we have to re-expose the basement membrane so that those critical structures will realign. So this is why I have to have good freezing. So this is our number 15 blade. So essentially all along this edge, I wanna be scraping this. In certain cases, depending on the actual wound, um, I would actually would cut this out. So as opposed to just re-exposing the basement membrane, I would actually do another ellipse around it to make sure that we have good exposure of the actual basement membrane. Because if not, this just will not seal back together. You're okay? Yes. Good. So once I'm content that that's re-exposed, then your argument becomes, well, how do we bring this back together nicely enough? Now, if I had, if I was up in my office, there's an internal suture type that we could be using, but it's not available to us here. So this is why I'm gonna put in stitches in closer proximity and then the other issue with this is I'm going to be leaving them in longer This should lay nicely like that, just like that. So I'll slow the next one down so you can better feel for what we're doing. Ideal distance between Stitches, they'll talk about 0.7 mil or 7 millimeters or 0.7 centimeters. For most lesions, that will shorten up reviewing the face. This one, again, I'm going to be putting them in tighter because we've already had this open up once. We don't want this to open up a second time. So here again, this is your V here. So I do three loops so it self-locks. Grab the end of the suture and then I pull it so that it's flat. Just like that. See, if I rotate it this way, that's not flat. This is how I want it to lay. And that puts even pressure across the incision.
and I can tell by putting this isn't in, in this there's not a lot of pressure across this so I can certainly see why the original clinician probably may have elected to not put dermal stitches in if I had to guess I would say it was probably just taken out a little bit too early and potentially it was just unlucky as well the person may have just shifted in just the perfect fashion that there was enough pressure on it that it opened back up So this is why if you see me when I talk about doing other procedures, I'll get a feel for how much tension is across this when I'm doing it. And if I've made the decision not to do internal stitches, and then I put the first one in particular, but even the second incision or a stitch in, and I feel like I have to put a lot of tension in, then just go ahead and cut those out and then grab your internal stitches and put in the internal stitches. Here we go again, there's our V. So three loops, you grab the end like that, and then it should lay perfectly flat like that, just like that. And you have to pu pull super hard on it, just traumatizes tissues. So there's a balance between making sure that you have a good seal, but not over traumatizing the tissues. And you're comfortable? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so the other frustration you sometimes get with working in the clinic is equipment is different. So if you're astute, you notice what I'm actually using here is not a needle driver, so it's pointed towards the end. You can get the job done, obviously, which is what we're doing here. But if you do any length of these, there's a frustration in using the wrong equipment. It just isn't as effective as some of the other stuff we could use. But that's an argument for another day. Almost done. dog in this side that should heal nicely irrespective of what we end up doing so that looks pretty good otherwise the incision looks good so we'll just leave that alone then we'll see her back in a little while